Welcome back. So let me just for a second, where, where did I go before? Because I want you guys, if you want to learn something about the VPF, I, I feel this guy is the best tutorial out there. The VPF um, that's tutorial.com. I don't know who owns it, I don't know who made it, but I like it. They did a really, really cool job here. Um, so I just want to show you a few things in here. Um, to, let's start out with figuring out how to do the layout. Let's scroll down here and I'll show you there are all these panels here on the right side that you can use. And this is what's interesting for us right now. But there's also about how we bind our data to our list views, how we use different commands, dialogues. We're going to use those as well. Um, there's so much in here and every one of them has a small code example that you can copy paste into your code directly to get an example shown. And I'm going to show you this lesson how to start out with figuring out a good layout for our application. So I'll go back to the panels part here and I'll just grab some code. There's an introduction to what panels are all about. Go and watch it if you want to. I'm going directly for the grid splitter because I want it to be split in two. Let me show you an image. I want something like this in my application. Um, so I'm looking for this grid split setup. And here's actually an example where we have a grid that's defined for us, right? So I'm just going to copy this code, nothing else. I'll show you how to work with it, but I'm just copying it for now. Let's uh, go into our code. And what I'll do is I'll remove this button because that just didn't get to be very pretty. So I'll just remove that and now I'm back to my normal window, it's just empty. And I'll paste in this code I just took from, um, from vpftutorial.com. And if I open it, this now and I just give you guys some more space so you can view what's actually going on, you'll notice that, there we go, I have a right and left side. Notice how simple it was to take um, other people's code and put it into my application. That's so cool because now it's just text. It's not right clicking or drag and dropping and it's just text that I paste in. So, but with great power comes great responsibility and let's try and understand what it's actually doing here. So this is a grid layout, one of the more complex layouts that are out there. And actually it's fairly simple to understand even though it is one of the more complex ones out there. Let's try and read this. When you do a grid layout, this tag right here, this is what we call a tag. We have a start tag and an end tag. So in this case, grid starts there and ends there. That's actually the, the most outer layer of our application in this case. That's the grid right now. So inside the grid, first we have some what we call metadata or definition data. So we define that inside the grid, there are three columns, right? There are column one, that's going to take up as much space as it there's left. Column two is going to take up five pixels and column three is going to take up as much space as is left. What does this mean? Let me try and show you. If I write 20 here, notice that it just grabbed, there's only 20 pixels in the third column. Let me just put the star back. Now we'll split it evenly between these two columns. Let me try and put in the center and say we want 100 in the center. Notice now this guy got a lot bigger, right? So it's a way for us to define the layout, how much space we want in each column. I could also add another column here if I wanted to say, let's add some an extra column. And in the last column, I just want to give 10 pixels. Now notice there's a small extra column here, right? So it's that simple. That's what we do here. We define the columns, how many columns we want. Now for each column, we add something to the dialog, uh, sorry, to the grid. So this means in the first column, add a text block. So if I click this guy, you'll see I've marked the text block. That's the first column. In the second column, add a grid splitter. If you don't know what a grid splitter is, we can go back and have a look here. What is a grid splitter? Well, there's a small explanation on how, what it is here. And you can see what it is, of course. It's this guy that you can drag back and forth. That's the grid splitter. And we don't want to use more than five pixels right now, but it could be a 10 pixel grid splitter. It's up to you how you want it to, to look. That's really up to you. So let's just, before we end this, try to add another column and add a label to that column. So step one is to add another column definition here. And I don't want it that big. Let's just give it a 50 right now, just to show you. So now there's space here, 50. Now I want to create a new label here. So what I'll do is I'll make a start tag, call these tags, and an end tag, meaning that this is a label. And in here, I'm going to define, first of all, where, what column should it be placed in? And in my case, it should be placed in column three. So we have column zero, column one, column two, and column three. Okay, what should the label say? 
It should say hi. Let's try and add hi in here. I'll save this. And if I scroll down a bit, you should be able to see hi somewhere. If I did it right. There it is. Hi right there. So let's start and run the application. And let's see what we actually got. Now I know the hi shouldn't be there. It was just to show you how similar it is to extend on this. Another thing I want to show you is how cool that the layout is actually dynamic. So when I start changing the size of my application, it will actually change the size of each column as well. Uh, not like in WinForms where you have to get a master degree in, in something, something, layouts or whatever, and then you can start doing it. And yes, I know I'm exaggerating, sorry, but I'm just so frustrated about WinForms right now. So here's the high, and if I start dragging around here, you'll notice that, um, that the size will actually resize automatically. There we go. So I get more and more space in different areas. And here, here's the other one where you can see I kind of can switch between these. So we have been running with our split pane now using just a simple copy-paste function, and that's how simple it is. See you in the next lesson where we'll start adding a list view and stuff like that.